We do have uh, Mr. Olusio Onibinde, um, Budget Foundation, who's uh, on queue, ready to talk to us. And um, we'll be talking about uh, the 3.7 trillion Naira. And uh, that's exactly what we'll be looking at. Okay? Uh, but then again, it's, it, it's good to have you join us, uh, first off. Let me say, good morning to you. So how are you doing? Can you hear me loud like care? Very well. I, I, I know you're starting off with a smile. It seems like uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all know what the, the pulse of Nigerians uh, is indeed mm. uh, saying or reading. Uh, anyway, following the allegations and counter-allegations around the budget padding and so on, uh, you have spoken, and you spoke initially when the, uh, the budget was indeed released by the presidency before it was signed. Um, a little thing here and there was picked. One of it was uh, the office of the First Lady. The money is allocated to that. The money is for the car. We do remember the all-important, obnoxious, uh, uh, the yacht as well. But here we are, a brand new one. 3.7 trillion Naira is in the talks. I'm going to start off with my very first question to you uh, this morning. Um, can you take us through what the controversy really is. Um, thanks so much. And I think the, the controversy is from the idea, from I mean, the proposition um, by the uh, Senator Abduningi that 3.7 trillion naira has been padded into the budget. Um, that uh, when there's a certain amount of money that they cannot account for is in the budget. And he made that proposition and saying that within the, maybe the National Assembly leadership, they understand what those funds will be used for. Um, we got into action. We sat down and analyzed the budget. And we checked, is this a true situation if we check, if we look into it properly? Uh, we found out that uh, that was not fully true. Uh, one, um, the position that we run to this budget, that we run to a $5 trillion budget and a $20 trillion budget, that is not true. A component of the budget is specifically dedicated for MDAs, that's ministries, departments, and agencies. But another component of the budget is for GOEs, which is the government-owned enterprises, and the statutory bodies. So that is another component of the budget. The statutory bodies, which is around $3.2 trillion, the budget breakdown for the approved are not made public. So maybe that is one he has the poor understanding of. So I don't think it's true. Um, the padding allegation, I don't find it as true. But on the fact that some of these items do not have a breakdown, I think to some extent, yes, on those points, then Senator Abduningi was right. Um, and the other part is also to look at the insertions into the budget, some of which has cropped up again. The several items were being inserted into the budget. And we also validated that around 2.2 Eight trillion naira was inserted a different item indiscriminately into the budget. Um, we've analyzed that. We've brought out the publication that is available on our website for people to see. I mean, budget website is called budget.org. For people to see projects that were inserted into the project by members of the National Assembly, and they can either query them, question them, and also ensure that those projects are completed. A lot of those projects are not put in areas where they can be properly delivered or where it can be properly implemented. And so those are the questions uh, Senator Abduningi read, read. And I think uh, uh, I don't find the suspension by the National Assembly, I don't find it justified. If he made an error in the numbers or maybe when he was bringing numbers together, it sh those things should be explained to him. But to go ahead and suspend, I don't think that's fair in the spirit of accountability. Okay, well, um, it, it, it's... It's not, it's not new, I mean, the, the claims of budget padding. You know, maybe that's why a lot of Nigerians aren't necessarily even shocked, you know, or surprised, you know, by this. Um, but can, can you speak a little bit more about these items? You know, I remember I watched the interview you had a couple of days ago where you said there are certain parts of the budget, you know, that, uh, you know, the figures are a little vague, you know, certain aspects of it that you cannot necessarily interrogate uh, to the detail. Um, what those funds will be used for, and maybe that's where these hundreds of billions or trillions of naira, you know, if, if, uh, are snuck in. So can you, can you, you know, share a little bit more about that? And also, um, the revelations of constituency projects, 266 million, 500 million, and, and the likes, you know, aren't those things that we should, you know, get rid of? Yeah, two things. One is the, the what you call statutory transfers that you call first line charges. 
Um, and those things are created to protect them um, from uh, fluctuating government revenues or to protect their independence. For example, you don't want the judiciary to be waiting on the executive to receive their funds or the legislature to be waiting on the executive to be waiting for their funds. So they created these first light charge items um, that at least they get some level of priority. Um, the unfortunate part is that immediately they created these first line charge items. Uh, these items, the details are not made public, like UBEC, like NDDC, uh, like TED Fund, like uh, the National Assembly, like National Judicial Council. All of these agencies should have detailed line by line, so that Nigerians can properly interrogate them. And they should also be adhered to the budget that is presented to the public. So um, that's the first thing. Um, it, and this is an advocacy that has been going on for over the years. The statutory transfers specifically do not have details, and Nigerians are not able to question them. And I think it is right for Senator Abutuningi to say you cannot just pass a budget without details. This um, agencies or these institutions should have a detail and we should be able to see them. And it should be added to the budget. I mean, it should be a 28.77 trillion naira budget with full details. That's one. The second part of things is also about this constituency project. Previously, um, and I mean, up to like 2016, National Assembly had 100 billion naira for constituency project. And there was a bit of limit into what National Assembly members introduced into the budget. They could adjust existing projects that have been proposed by the executive. So if the executive says, we're doing legacy by the express road for 100 billion, they will say, okay, do it for 80 billion or do it for 120 billion. That was a practice that was known to most Nigerians. And the National Assembly had 100 billion naira to now interrogate or to now deliver projects in their constituents, which was decent enough. Now, what you now get is National Assembly members have gone beyond looking into the budget of uh, of the constituency project, and now it's certain things into the PMDA's budget for their own constituency. So it's a question of maybe how close you are to the senator, the power you wield over who is, who is leading that agency. That is what it has become. They now have even what you call special set, special budget centers, like the uh, Federal Cooperative College or G River National Productivity Center. All of those places, the National Assembly members put in items into those agencies into those agencies for their for their own constituencies. And now that's now, now going to even the 100 billion constituency project does not make sense anymore. That has now risen as high as 2.28 trillion naira into the budget. So if you look at the budget, the budget was raised by 1.2 trillion naira to 7 trillion naira. They reduced around 900 billion from the GOE's budget and they now got 2.2 trillion naira worth of projects to insert into the budget. And the executive has not pushed back on that. And what we are seeing now is that People are, it looks like people are even trying to introduce their family problems into the budget. That's how ridiculous things have become. Um, and some of them are solar lighters, um, solar street lights, bowls, and things like that. Uh, and, and one is wondering what is the immediate value of things like this. So there has to be questions that are needed to be answered. The National Assembly is going to what I call a legislative overreach, and it will have significant implications for the country. Hmm. It, it seems like um, every year we're starting to see um, more drama unfold, especially with uh, the budget. And like we've said, this is not new. But it seems this mm. time there's a lot, there's, there's a searchlight uh, regarding um, what is really going on. Maybe if we want to use, it, use the word to say that Nigerians have all of a sudden woken up and are mm. more determined to ask more questions. One of the questions that... Um, um, uh, many are looking to ask currently has got to do with the um, the school the loan of, of course the loan scheme um, I'm, mm. I'm sure you're also aware that it has been uh, postponed indefinitely the figures were definitely also part of what we saw in the appropriation bill now that it has been postponed is there any any way that budget can identify what could happen to that student loan scheme and i don't know if you can recall as well the funds that were initially to be used for the uh, yacht was said that it would be moved to the student loan scheme and then later on it was said that the yacht had already been purchased but, thank yeah. you can you help <laughs> us you know just to pose these two where are we going now with this budget yeah, I mean, if you check the 2024 budget that was signed into law, 50 billion naira was approved for the takeoff of the student loan scheme. 
Um, and I guess we are expecting that immediately we're in the third month now. So the budget is is uh, currently in implementation. We expect that um, some of those funding should have been released. I don't know what is um, accounting for the delay. The student loan scheme was promised by the president in his manifesto. So if there are things that he should have paid intense attention to at the beginning of his term, that should have been part of it. And, and if you look at the budget of uh, 28.77 trillion, 50 billion naira is not a lot of money. I mean, the government's budget is almost 20 billion naira to rehabilitate um, the building in uh, the, the federal government uh, state house in, 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 in Lagos. I mean, the Dodan, former Dodan barracks or whatever we call it now. So, I mean, so to say 50 billion for the whole, the entire students of Nigeria for Lagos, that doesn't sound uh, huge in my own view. We may have lost. Um... Okay, I think you might have to unmute yourself again if you can hear us. Uh, Mr. Nguyen, can you hear us? Oh, okay. Um, just a little technical uh, glitch there with the audio, but we're looking forward to that explanation. So, can you uh, try to unmute yourself again and possibly let's see if we can hear you? No. Okay, all right. Please go ahead. Go ahead. So I was saying that the, the student loan scheme needs you to happen, in my own view, but maybe the need of time in, in terms of delivering it properly. And I think that's one of the challenges for this government. A lot of policies are rolled out, but I don't think a lot of thinking has gone into it. Maybe they don't want to make mistakes. We've had this first subsidy, exchange rates, parity, the expatriate levy. Um, a lot of policies that we start, we stop, we slow down, we start you know, changing it or manipulating it in between. So maybe they want to take their time to make sure this is properly delivered. But, but I think a lot of Nigerians are expectant on this. Um, this government has not shown uh, fiscal responsibility, uh, what I would call fiscal consolidation that should be. And that's why it's very important because the monetary side is trying to squeeze cash out of the system by, you know, by constricting liquidity, you know, by also raising NPR, by, raising CRR and also you know, doing all of those stuff just to make sure that they keep a much more uh, conservative monetary position. If the fiscal side is also not doing the same, okay, we cannot get the kind of answers that we want. So the federal government has to significantly find that balance. Projects that are most important, that are productive, that are productive use to most Nigerians are things that should be done, not things that are done just to advance either political mileage or just to um, benefit people directly. I don't think this one should be done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, I argued earlier that it was mostly, um, you know, propaganda. You know, it, it's most, it, it sounds like a government that, you know, likes to paint itself like it is, you know, and it's, it's working. You know, without mm. actually taking time to think through some of these policies. You mentioned the expatriate yeah. levy. I haven't forgot about that before. The student loan, you know, if you remember, even in the previous administration, the Nigeria Air Project, it's, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, let's, let's, you know, announce things to make us look like we're working without actually thinking through how, how successful they would be. Um, or the Dubai, or the Dubai, uh, exactly. UAE. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I want you to also speak about budget implementation, you know, and if, if that's one of the things that we may also be getting um, wrong, we, we do not x-ray the implementation and the success of, you know, every budget. And so when we're talking about 28 trillion Naira now, you know, in, in, for a budget, um, will there be questions asked as to how, you know, successful the budget was at the end of the year? Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, um, budget implementation in the Nigerian palace is, is about what gets priority for the, most times for the political class. And I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a fake meeting um, readout that was published uh, day to day, uh, this, I think yesterday or this morning. And I read like there was an augmentation of a project uh, from more than 12 billion naira to 895 billion. So a project was awarded 2012, close to like 12 years ago. That project has not been completed. Now you're augmenting the project you should have completed by your standard for around 12 billion naira. You now need 896 billion to complete that project. And why do we do that? And it's not that we did not borrow money to do capital project. It's not that we did not 
spend money on capital projects. But capital projects are not targeted. They are not targeted. So you see that you have a big loaf of bread with a small, you know, with a small bit of a butter. You know, trying to spread, uh, you know, a put a small margarine, put butter on this on the big loaf. It will not be suitable for eating. That's what we keep doing in the Nigerian situation. And instead of us to target, so that's why we don't even when we implement, we implement five percent, five percent, five percent in multiple places. Instead of implementing. 30%, 40%, 80%, 60%, 45% in few places. And that's why when you even talk implementation, you kind of want to see it from a composite angle. You want to see it from a detailed angle to say what exactly gets done this year. And so that's the situation with the country. Um, our implementation levels numbers are low because definitely current expenditures keep getting priority. Salaries will be paid. Lawmakers will enjoy the, the people in the presidency will travel, everybody will get themselves sorted. It's the capex that gets the delay. And when even the capex is done, it is not done in a proper manner. If procurement starts now, you know, because we have a very complex procurement system, all procurement starts at once. So instead of you to say, what is the priority for the project in the procurement budget? No, you will not get that. All the procurements begin at once. So now you now spread, everybody wants some share in the national budget. And it's just like, Solar light, solar street lights. What is the business of the federal government in providing solar street lights to a local community? What is the business of the federal government in providing boreholes in a local community when there are local government councils, where there are state governments? Well, we have come into this thing that we have we have turned to this sharing nature, and at the end of the it breeds a lot of inefficiencies at the end of the day. So, it, it's whatever we want. I mean, it's whatever we need. If we want to change the country. We will have to ask the hard questions and do things different. Else, we will keep going through this uh, through this circle without we just love motion, but no movement yeah. at the end of the day. All right, it's really Thank heartbreaking. You, so much. Um, um, you know, of course, you know the, the budget implementation repeat uh, duplicated items in the budget that appear every year. You know, and and you know these funds just keep getting shipped out. It's it's a heartbreaking situation. Um, Mr. Onigbindi, thank you very much for your time. Uh, this morning, I will, of course, you know, continue to look out for more updates on the budget page on uh, Twitter and see if there's any, um, you know, developments. But thanks for your time once again. Thank you. Much is a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Have All a right. wonderful day.